What's up? This is Johnny G at the Fresh Outlook Business Symposium. Um, this is episode one, and we got a great um, speaker, a great business uh, person to talk about their business and how um, they do things and what's their fresh outlook in today's environment, especially with the corona um, coming, you know, going in our in our community. So just to start off, I want to introduce uh, Gabe Esteban. He is a uh, part owner of Chased Family Market. So tell us, tell us something about yourself, Gabe. Um, how, you know, your journey, how'd you start and to where you are now. What's up guys? Um, I'm Gabe or yeah, you can call me Gabe. Uh, I'm one of the three brothers that run the business in Pasadena. It's called Chase Family Market. A uh, little history behind it. It's more like handed down from my mom when she started this store uh, in 87. So the store is currently, I think, 33 years now. It's older than me, for sure. And the name Chase is like C-H-A-A-S-T-E. It's actually an acronym of my mom, my brother, my brothers, and my dad. I wasn't born yet, so I'm not even on the name of the store. That's the funny thing. <laughs> but me, uh, Gabe, uh, my role in the store out of the three brothers, I'm the youngest, and I'm actually the chef. Uh, I also played the role, I mean, we all played the role, but um, I, I graduated in the Philippines. I studied there. I took culinary school. Uh, I wanted to actually live there for the rest of my life because, you know, I had all my homies out there in the Philippines. Uh, I actually finished in uh, marketing, uh, my master's in marketing communication also. So I assume, okay, if I'm going to come back, I can create some kind of strategic marketing for the store. And I realized it, didn't, it doesn't work out that way. So what uh, I came up to, or when I came back, I realized being in the store for about probably two years minimum, that's how I figured it out because we're a small mom and pops. So it was a lot harder because when I used to create campaigns for businesses in the Philippines, we have a big budget. We're like, okay, here's a million pesos, go full, do whatever you want with our budget. I, I don't, we don't have a budget in our store, so I got to figure that out. Wow. Thanks. So your journey is, uh, is different from most, um, say, uh, business owners in the United States. You know, uh, you're born, obviously, you're born in, in Pasadena, right, Gabe? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, so yeah. So, yeah, that, that's true. I, I forgot to add that part. So I was born and raised here, Cali, in Pasadena. Uh, I left when I was 12. So I lived there basically half of my life. I left when I was 12, came back when I was 24. And, like, basically my maturing life was in the Philippines. So it's not much of a culture shock, but I missed half of my life coming back here. So I'm a little, I'm trying to catch up to the trend right now, you know? <laughs> well, that's good. You're multi-ethnic uh, and in the traditions, right? I mean, a lot of uh, Filipino Americans, you know, don't, don't get a chance to actually experience the, the culture of yeah. the, the Philippines. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, which is good. You know, you need to get back to your roots and learn it. And then obviously, in, in, in Chase, uh, it's, you know, obviously a Filipino, um, you know, oriented um, kind of yeah. food and marketplace um, gives it a good, you know, you have a, a good good roots in, in, in the culture. So um, in terms of influential, influential people that um, obviously talk about your mom and your, your dad a little bit, uh, is there other mentors, like, like what other mentors and as well as your parents have influenced you to get to this? Um, oh, man. So uh, me being the baby, the funny story is I'm the baby of my brothers and I'm the baby of my mom's side and my dad's side. So all the relatives, I'm the baby. So I literally just pick up from them. Uh, one of my biggest mentors, I would say, but don't tell him, I hope he's not watching this, is my eldest brother. So I look up to him. My great, my great aunt is Christian. He's the eldest. Um, he, he teaches me a little things here on the side. I mean, they, they did financial advising too in the past. Um, I learned, you know, I picked up stuff that what I lacked when I wasn't living here for half of my other life. Um, but my motivation and inspiration to come back was actually my mom because I didn't realize uh, when the market crashed in 2008, things were getting really hard for the store. And I didn't realize I had the talent to actually not run the store yet, but, you know, help out in the kitchen with what I could. But the funny thing is when I went to culinary school, we don't learn Filipino food. That's that's. <laughs> I mean, I learned that at all. And, you know, I, I, I had, uh, I learned through tough love. So good thing. I thank God that I know how to cook. So I just actually observed my mom and you know how moms are, they're like taking dito or like put a little bit of this, put a little of that, but they cook with love. So she's my biggest mentor also, besides the fact that, you know, I learned through criticism, a lot of it, but nice. I got better. 
Yeah, I mean, that's all about trial and error, right? Trial and error, that's the best way to learn. Um, what, what, uh, if you could discuss uh, your business, like in terms of, um, you know, what are the rewards, what are the challenges, and then um, what's working, what, what, what worked in the past that didn't work today, and then going forward, especially with a, with a COVID um, outbreak or a COVID yeah. pandemic, what's, um, what do you see going forward? So, you know, yeah. currently how, how it is right now, mm-hmm. how it's changed, and, well, you know, um, if you could discuss yeah. that a little bit about your, the business aspect. So like how we, when I, my mom first came, you know, uh, she started in 87, a lot of it, she had no guerrilla, guerrilla marketing, no nothing. She basically just, whoever came to the store, her biggest uh, uh, customers were basically Hispanics because she started off with fried fish. And from there, like she had, everything was word of mouth. Until now, it's still word of mouth. We have Instagram, we have social, but we don't really focus too much on it. Um, I would love to, to be honest, but I'm not really tech savvy. I just like scrolling through Instagram, to be honest. But yeah. that's the special thing. <laughs> that's the special thing about our store is I realized, even though with the marketing background, people do have a, like a very clean page and this and that. We love to market the fact that we're a family, and we treat our customers with family. That it comes with the name of the store, family. And uh, I realized we do have. We don't have a substantial amount of followers, but we have enough followers that are actually like loyal customers. It goes with our Yelp reviews also. And the more that we've been promoting family, which we truly believe, like we want to spread the culture through our food, through our service. We want them to know what Filipinos are really like. Um, like we have both best of both cultures. You know, I wish uh, but that's what we're trying to, um, you know, like let everyone know that, you know, you could get back to your roots. Uh, our, our culture is basically me since we have we lived in the Philippines and we lived also here. We understand the the the, the culture like and our heritage so we actually speak the language too so which is pretty cool in the store because you have the old lolas coming in all the you know like my mom's generation come in we speak the Gallo to them uh as for marketing and moving forward right now since we don't have that much funds uh we do the most that we can so like everything if you walk into the store i hope you guys do pass by if you walk into the store um everything that you see there we actually did like x deals with people we have a mural that we did uh an artist came in we like, you know, she, she loved us so much. She just did a mural for us for free. And like, we just feed her. <laughs> and then uh, um, for the interior designing, that's, you know, we're trying to do as much as we can with our bare hands. Uh, for marketing, really, there's not really much that we actually honestly do. It's more of our, the power of our word of mouth that's still getting out there. And recently, uh, we were featured by LA Times. Well, you know, we've, we've been praying so hard for someone to give us a chance. And uh, LA Times just featured us probably a month ago. And then we were featured by AARP. <laughs> we were for AARP. Uh, I, think, yeah, I think I think if if everybody knows well, what Turon is, it's basically a, a banana uh, fritter, right? It's wrapped in banana, yeah. uh, uh, like a egg, kind of what egg rolls are wrapped in, and then you fry it. And this is the man. Oh man, that's what we're. This is what we're totally famous for. So it's like, uh, if you come into the store, we have a market like Filipino goodies and stuff like that. Oh, hey, my brother's here. What's up, coach? Christian Esteban, the second brother of the, the three brothers that, are, that will be um, um, carrying a torch for the trust, trust market, family market. Um, Christian, we're talking about, um, you know, the, the, the business of uh, what you guys currently do. What are the rewards? What are the challenges? And what's working? What's not working? And going forward, how do you guys um, plan to um, uh, continue the legacy that your mom created? All right, so what I from from being the eldest of the hey, let me get some uh, let me get some hand sanitizer right now, you know. I mean, I should be wearing a mask. No, um, my uh, thank God we're a second generation um, business um, business owner. So my mom had to she went through all the hurdles first, you know. So we just had to like follow through. It's kind of like you guys in basketball. You you went through it first and you taught us. So. What we, what we really had to go through was just understanding the hard work. That's pretty much was it, what it was because she set the platform for us as far as understanding how to find the suppliers. I believe for us, the, the hardest thing is to work with the suppliers. That's the hardest, like getting the supplies and having it on time. It's right now, exactly like right now during this coronavirus, it's like a bidding war in LA. You get You get out there, there's a long line, you have to, Thank God my mom has been in the game for 30 years. So we kind of know certain certain suppliers. So we have rebuilt a relationship. 
and they kind of cater to us. So I think that's the hardest part. A business wise, marketing. This guy graduated, he has a master's degree in marketing, so he's the one pushing towards that. Uh, my job for us is just to keep us together as the eldest. And I, I believe it's a lot a lot of has to do with like personality. My brother's uh the image model, the brand the image, image model. model. <laughs> PR. So, yeah, so sure. yeah, like you know, just like in Hoop Town, you know, I mean I wasn't the most talented, but definitely had a lot of heart on the team. You know, mm-hmm. and and you know, and that takes you not only in sports but in life in general. You know, like for for us to survive. Like my brother Abraham probably has the most brains out of all of us. This guy's the most creative, and you just need somebody to hold us down. So I guess that's my job. And so the the my take on you know where we're at right now is I want to share what oh no I we want to share is uh to continue our mom's legacy as far as keeping the Filipino culture alive, Filipino American culture alive and Filipino culture alive within um, the Pasadena community and, and the greater Los Angeles and hopefully like the entire California. Yeah. Uh, but you know, because we we're, we're a good hybrid because we lived in the Philippines for almost a decade, each of us. So we, we kind of, we have a good taste of the, living in the Philippines and living here at the same time. You know, so you, you talked about like uh, a little bit about your journey in the Philippines, and I think before you joined us, uh, your brother talked about his journey. So if you could talk a little about your journey from you know being being born in Los Angeles and then going back to the Philippines and the things that you've done, I think that's interesting because I, I think the fresh outlook is like we all don't come from the same um, you know background. We all come from the same background, but we have different journeys, and it lands you to certain certain destinations. So. If you could talk a little bit about that and, you know, what you did and, and how you got here and how it's helping you out now, if you could just, you know, elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, you know what, um, to, to start, if, if, we never, if we never went to the Philippines, it would be, despite the fact that my mom set the platform for us on how to run the business, I, I don't think we would be able to mingle with the customers as well as we do now. Because, I mean, you know me, Coach, since I was – my early teens, even before our teens, um, and when we were 12, like I couldn't speak Tagalog before. <laughs> I could like barely understand Tagalog. So, you know, living in the Philippines bridged that gap of understanding the Filipino culture on, you know, being a native of, from where our parents are from and being a native over here. So it's nice to be able to switch back and forth. I mean, I can speak Tagalog, but it just sounds, I have an accent, <laughs> but enough to get by. And understanding how the culture was in the Philippines, you know, like sometimes, sometimes that I mean that 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 topic is very sensitive with me because uh, a lot of Filipinos sometimes were uh, what's a good way to describe it? Where we don't know our identity growing up, you know. Like for me, I grew up with a majority of Caucasians uh, in my class in school, and then on weekends I'm with with you guys, like my Hooptown boys, we're all Filipino. So it's like a culture shock. I mean, I know you could relate to that because you went to Notre Dame. So, but you hooped a lot, so you're around different people. And then sometimes when you're growing up, you're just trying to fit in. And I was the only Asian kid with seven white boys around me. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then, so, and then and then I go to, on the weekends, I'm with you guys and I'm like, oh yeah, this is what it's about. And I'm with my Philan friends, Hooptown family. And it was, it was like a weird, like I, and then during the week, I, it's weird. I'm like trying to be urban, and then I try to be a private school kid. And so when I when I when I was growing up, I to be honest, I didn't even. I'm like sometimes it's hard to be Filipino around those people because <laughs> I I still remember third grade, third grade. I'll never forget this. I brought I brought my balon. That's like my lunch to school. I had my corned beef and my rice. And my boy Pat, which I'm close to, he's super cool. I love that guy. But he was just kidding. And we're third grade. He said, "Oh, you're eating dog food. Let me get some." And I was like, "Oh, this dude just said dog food." But I know you're just kidding. I know you're just kidding. But, <laughs> but, but you know, like I never forgot that. I'm like 37 years old. <laughs> I never forgot that. So you know what I did? I never brought ballot ever again in elementary school. And if you bring McDonald's, like you're the man. So I told my mom, "Mom, you gotta bring me some chicken nuggets, 20 pieces." So I could, so I could give it to people, you know. So long story short, um, moving to the Philippines developed our personality. Not only that, our character and understanding our heritage and our culture. So I mean, I think that we would be a good, we would be a, a good foundation for Philams to 
you know, to converse with also because not a lot of the Philams over here understand the culture back at back in the Philippines. I mean, they like they lived there for a little bit, maybe they played some basketball for like two, couple, three years, you know. I mean, back in the Philippines, I was just blessed to have a career in entertainment there. You know, I was a TV personality for five years. I was, uh, I, I did a lot of uh, like leadership seminars. I traveled around the Philippines. The, the show I was given, I was blessed, it was a travel destination show for kids. So I've been to almost every festival and every wild Philippine destination in the Philippines. So I understand how the culture is there. You know, I've seen how people that people from Manila and the people from like Davao or like no, like or Negros Occidental, it's completely different. And people don't even know that. They're like, oh, you're from the Philippines? Oh yeah. I then my next question is, where are you from in the Philippines? You know? So like people come in the store and they would say, Hey, my, my grandma, you know, she cooks, I don't eat anybody's adobo, but my grandma's adobo. You know, I said, Okay, cool. But <laughs> where where Wait, where's your where's your grandma from? She's Filipino. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, but up north they cook the adobo different from the people in the south. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're from like Davao, they cook it, cook it. They put some sugar in there, a lot of sugar in there. You know, <laughs> so I'm like, uh, like, where's they from? Where are they from? Uh, I don't know. It's like Philippines. You know, I was like, okay, cool. So, now, so that I think that's my opportunity to explain sometimes to share what I experienced with some of these Philams because sometimes you know, people misunderstand that word that name that, that title fob you know a lot of the feelings would be like oh you a fob you know and i'm like you know actually you know if someone call me that now i'm gonna embrace it <laughs> i am a fob i lived there so long i mean i get i'm, I'm super filipino i mean i was living with all, all my filipino friends i still go there once a year you know alex uh, or he's like he's like my brother he's he's, he's over there superstarring it out there in basketball he could switch that. that's the beauty about that i think that i think our generation we need to share with with our kids, because we're at that stage where our kids are growing now, they're, they have no clue what it is to be Filipino. <laughs> you know, They only know what we show them. And I, I think it's very important that we, as like, you know, us being a pioneer of the Filipino culture in Pasadena and a landmark for Filipinos that we need to keep this going, you know? And if I do have kids in the future, which I hope I do soon, uh, I want to maintain that tradition, you know? Just like how you guys did, Coach. You guys kept that basketball alive with, Filipino Americans, you know, and, and that's a big part of my growth. My mentality, a lot of my mentality came from like a hoop, hoop town mentality back in the day, the way you thought, like, you know, like uh, we would walk into a gym, even though I didn't play a lot, <laughs> but we would walk into a gym, but we're the only Asians, everyone's black and white. I mean, especially during your generation, you were hooping with like big time ballers, you know? And so you, you know how that feels of, we need, a, we need to step up our game, you know, and the sense of community, the sense of unity. It's like really strong within me and my heart and, and my brothers. And that's what I try to share with all the other Filipino Americans, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, no, you, you talked about like now I want to talk going forward and going back to the business and, and all your experiences uh, going forward. Uh, that means you plan to do something different, um, like in terms of uh, like marketing, advertising, um, your outreach to the community. Um, with all the experiences you have with trying to bring in the, you know, let's say, say other ethnicities, not only just, you know, like the Filipino Americans, um, if you could, you know, talk more about that. Um, I mean, do you have any plans on that on, on going forward, especially after the Corona stay at home um, order gets lifted? Oh yeah. Well, Gabriel has a lot of, to do with the marketing. Want to go, want to talk a little bit about that? With, um, like going well, forward. right now with, Right now, how everything's going on with the coronavirus um, moving forward, like hopefully all this ends, but uh, if we're going to adapt to this, like, you know, we were thinking more of like takeout, pickups, just like how the restaurants are still doing it. Yeah. Uh, our, our health code department is a little different from where actually we have our own in Pasadena compared to LA. So they're a lot stricter. So we have to comply with whatever their rules are um, in terms of like, events and stuff in the future we still want to tap like uh well what i what we initially want is to tap more of like corporate so we can do like packaged meals and stuff like that and then eventually uh we're, we're planning to do collaborations with a lot of people because um recently people have been uh, reaching out to us like who are they yeah so a lot of uh musicians like filipino american musicians and the other business owners um, now that they're that they know where who we are, because there's not a lot of second generation business owners that are philams, you know. 
And um, now I'm trying to reach out to them. They, they know that we're, we're like the bridge between Orange County and, and Los Angeles County. So I offer it to some of our friends now because we joined the Filipino Chamber of Commerce, the Pasadena Filipino Chamber of Commerce. And there's a bunch of young Philams there. So that's kind of cool. I mean, no offense to the older guys, but there it's completely different, you know? And, um, <coughs> oh, Corona, just kidding. <laughs> no, um, so, uh, yeah, so what we're trying to do is we're going to have, like, like ho collaborations. Hopefully, um, this summer, it, it still pushes through. We were going to have something called, like, Summer Nights, where we have, have some of, like, I mean, it could be anybody, but particularly we're trying to favor to, like, Asian Americans and Philams. Like, if you want to showcase music, we're going to have some nights would be after 8 p.m. and onwards. We would have, like, probably four other pop-ups with us, including ours, but no food, just desserts. And then people who wants to showcase their talent as far as music uh, is concerned or, like, um, or have, like, poetry. Or have, like, a chill hangout and do KGB, you know, like how we do in the Philippines. Because in the Philippines, they had this thing called Banchetto before. And it's like everybody, because everybody's just commuting in the Philippines. And so what I loved about Banchetto was they just had like an eatery with a bunch of like pop-ups there and people just chill. And I said, why can't we have that over here? Our parking lot is well lit. It's safe right off the freeway. But the Pasadena, like what my brother said, the Pasadena uh, Public Health Department is uh, extremely strict. So we could have everything inside, but they could they could hang out next to their car. So I was thinking we could go ahead and do that. Uh, and I, I was speaking to the other young Philams. I mean, that's a good direction where to go and link up with everyone else so we can start helping each other out. Like, you know, like what you said, like in this, with, within the community. Yeah. Um, any words of wisdom to aspiring, um, say, restaurant um, owners or if they want to open up their own market like you and have kind of like a hybrid market eating place? Or even even a food truck. I mean, what are the um, what are the things that you need? The number one things you need to establish, and then you know the things that you need to also um, be consistent. You know, anything, any words of wisdom on, on that aspect? Um, I mean, my brother Abraham would know the the criteria on how to run that side of the business. I mean, I wasn't a business major; I was a, a film major in broadcasting. And uh, but for me, to be honest, just running this business watching my mom do it you need prayer hard work the right attitude and that's going to equal success so how does that work so here it goes <laughs> you gotta pray so hard right and then if you fail you gotta have you have i mean you have to put the hard work in and even though you fail you got to have the right attitude and even though you fail hey it is what it is and then you have success but watching my mom work relentlessly you got you're gonna have to sacrifice your hours that's it oh plus plus now like uh the in comparison to the baby boomers like our parents generation and to ours um what we're trying to communicate to our mom right now is our generation we we thrive through collaborations because i notice a lot of the young leagues now they, they like to collaborate a lot they like doing pop-ups just like how we mentioned earlier and we're gonna we want to take the most of that opportunity when this is all over to like collaborate with everyone you know we're not only promoting ourselves we're promoting them through our business we want to connect like we want to be what are you what were you saying before you want to be like the main thing for everyone to connect each other well, be like a landmark for filipino americans you know just like a place where everyone could congregate and like you know they family. can find other services like someone comes up to us they actually ask us hey do you, know, do you know anyone that has like uh, empanadas or something like that? And we actually do have other suppliers. So we connect people to other Filipino businesses or any other business. Right. So, yeah. So network, but I, obviously network is a huge thing, right? And so it's kind of a bringing every, everybody back to community, right? I mean, that's kind of like going back to your roots, right? I mean, that's what. It, yeah. Right? No, that's what it's all about. Like uh, our, our store, that's why it's called Chase Family. We represent family and. We want everybody to reconnect. I mean, it could be anybody, anybody. I mean, it doesn't matter. We're all family. It doesn't matter what race or whatever it is, but especially Filipino Americans, you know, and Asian Americans, you know, because like, that's what we are. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm proud of our heritage. So, yeah. so I mean, lastly, any last uh, shout outs or, or, or um, you know, advice to like, people that want to visit your store that hasn't visited your store. I know I already, sh I shouted out your Mama Santuron, the, you know, your brother Gabe is the, is the main, uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, experimenter with the different types of Turon that he's making. 
And so anything else that you guys want to, you know, shout oh, out? Give, give us the LeBron James of the store. Bam. Uh, oh, check wow. us out. Check us out. We were featured on LA Times recently. Uh, that was a blessing. Uh, just recently, it's kind of funny, but AARP went to the store. <laughs> <laughs> For old people? Yeah, I know. They heard about us. You know, the most circulating magazine for retired uh, folks you know so uh, that was kind of cool uh we're just featured by asia journal so if you guys want to check us out there too but most importantly yeah if people want some home cooked meals come to go, stop by chase family market we're right here in pasadena if you type in if you type in uh filipino food in pasadena we're the only thing that pops up so yeah if you're filipino just represent culture that's what we're about and I, but lastly, before I go, Coach, I just want to bring it back one time for anyone who is listening. I know I'm not the greatest or I'm not anybody, but one thing I do know for any business, and it doesn't take a genius to figure this out, and it doesn't take a million books in school to figure this out, you need hard work. That's all I got to say. You need to have hard work and the right attitude. Because you can have a million teachers, but you don't have hard work and the right attitude, you ain't going to go nowhere. I mean, that's why I love sports. You have sports, you, you have a – like a, a baller kid over here, and then what? He can teach him? You, know, you smack that kid, and you have coach you like hit him in the head? That's probably like what I would do. But yeah. you have another dude who tries hard, but I ain't that good, but I'm putting my heart in it. So that I think that's what Chase Market's about. You know, we're, we're, we're that store for everybody. We're, we ain't flashy. We're not like a big time fine dining place. If you actually go in, you're gonna really feel like Philippines. Cause right when you walk in, you're gonna see like things hanging that we got yeah, from the yeah. festivals in the Philippines. You're like, oh damn, this place is kind of hood. <laughs> but yeah, but no, don't forget we're in Pasadena. So the public health department is kind of different. So, yeah. so yeah, so I'm just wanna tell everybody, yeah, if I could share some wisdom, that what we learned from our mom was, was hard work. My mom put her sweat and blood and if people are prepared to have a business, be prepared to sacrifice because nothing's easy. It, it won't come. I mean, if you are, then, and if you make good money and it's easy for you, then, hey, do your thing. But for us, it's super hard. <laughs> good thing we're, like, born into it. <laughs> so we're used to it, you know? Yeah. Well, um, you know, Gabe and uh, Chris, I uh, appreciate you guys uh, visiting the Fresh Outlook. You guys definitely made a, a fresh outlook in, in this business symposium. And, uh, you know, everybody come out to visit their store, 296 Allen, Avenue in Pasadena, south of the, the 210 freeway, and uh, Mama Santoron. They also got, you know, specialties that they got uh, every week, and they got all the, the comfort Filipino food that everybody mm -hmm. loves. I put some hey, Coach. You, you catch us there. Right hey, there. Coach, real Sorry. quick. Real quick, Coach. Hey, I like your hair. Would you get a comb over? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you like it? It's a nice, nice and sharp, right? Yeah. All right, well, thank you, and uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, Coach.